Oumuamua is back in the news, the Galactic Federation is making headlines, an alien signal has been detected from a nearby star, and the mystery of dreaming may have finally been solved. This and more coming up on The Edge. Greetings, my fellow fringe connoisseurs. You're watching On the Edge with J. Jordan Hawk, your source for strange and edgy news. For our first story today, Amuamua is making headlines once again. You may recall that back in 2017, our solar system had its very first interstellar visitor, dubbed Amuamua by astronomers, meaning scout or distant messenger. Believed initially to be a comet, then an asteroid, then who knows what, this particular comet asteroid type thing very quickly demonstrated some very unusual characteristics. Number one, its trajectory indicated it was not from within our solar system. Number two, its shape was long and cylindrical, which is not a normal naturally occurring object. Number three, this thing actually sped up on its way out of the solar system. Now, the fact that it was our first interstellar visitor was more than enough to garner headlines. But then a Harvard astronomer, Avi Loeb, made news by suggesting in a paper, um, guys, this thing is alien. Yes, that's right. A Harvard astronomer suggested that this may actually, in fact, be an alien probe of sorts. Well, that then made all the headlines until astronomers piled on and said, dude, you can't say the A word. While astronomers tried to scan it for alien signals, they got crickets. That enraged some scientists because it lends credibility to the idea that aliens exist. Since we know they don't exist, there is no reason to scan it for signals. More specifically, here is astronomer Paul M. Sutter on Twitter who said, quote, No, Oumuamua is not an alien spaceship. And he goes on to state that Avi Loeb and his fellow authors, quote, insult honest scientific inquiry to even suggest it, unquote. Personally, I think insulting fellow scientists on Twitter like an angry child mocks honest scientific inquiry, but alas, I'm not a scientist. Anyway, it didn't take long before astronomers decided Oumuamua was likely a planetesimal that got ejected into space. This probably happens all the time. We've just never noticed before. So, there is nothing to see here, as the astronomical community has spoken. Now, what has brought Oumuamua back in the news? Avi Loeb, the Harvard astronomer who suggested it was alien, well, he's not backing down. And in fact, he's publishing a new book this January 26th entitled Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, where he'll make his case that Oumuamua was in fact an alien visitor. Now, I haven't read the book since it's not yet available, but if Professor Loeb does convince me this was an alien probe, I have to say, I'm not impressed with our first visitors. To travel the vast interstellar distances between the stars and literally pass right through our cosmic backyard and not even say hello? Well, that's just rude. What do you all think? Like and comment down below. Is this thing a comet? An asteroid? A planetesimal? An alien probe? I think we need to get Jodie Foster to comment on this one. For our second story, if a Muamua really is an alien object, it may have been sent here by the Galactic Federation. And no, that's actually not a Star Trek reference, though I'm not above that. No, this Galactic Federation is actually a grouping of alien civilizations that has been in contact with our government for decades. Now, this is not something thrown together by the National Enquirer, I assure you. This news is in fact something that made headlines because it was revealed by a high-ranking Israeli general named Haim Eshed. And he had a lot more to say. Amongst his many revelations was that humans have been working with aliens on a special base on Mars and that Donald Trump was about to reveal their existence, but alien intervention prevented him from doing so. Humanity, according to Eshed, apparently is not ready yet. Forbes added some levity to this in their online edition of the story. Quote, The existence of a galactic federation might seem a bit far-fetched, sure, but the idea of Trump keeping such an earth-shattering secret, never blurting it out during a rally, is simply beyond the realm of possibility. Okay, true, but a bit glib. 
Now, there was a time when I would have completely dismissed all of this as lunacy. But, and I mean this sincerely, put this story in the context of the 2019 Pentagon disclosure of the existence of UFOs. Yeah, that was a whole year ago, so you can be forgiven for forgetting about it. If you're not aware of what happened in 2019, the Pentagon acknowledged the legitimacy of video footage leaked two years earlier, which depicted stunning UFO footage taken by Navy pilots from the USS Nimitz and the USS Roosevelt. The Pentagon confirmed the legitimacy of these videos, but also disclosed that these were of unknown origin. That's a euphemism for UFO, though the new preferred lingo is Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAP, because UFO has baggage. I mean, let's face it, if you acknowledge UFOs, pretty soon you'll be talking about the Galactic Federation, and we can't have that, now can we? Now, this is essentially UFO disclosure, that long-awaited time ufologists have been hoping for when the government finally comes clean about the existence of UFOs, because if these were from another country, the Pentagon would know about it. They wouldn't be classified as unidentified. People weren't living in a new world. Have you seen these videos? The Tic Tac UFO? They are doing impossible things. Louis Elizondo, the former head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which was a Pentagon program that studied UAPs, had this to say about these unusual videos in an interview with CNN. Quote, There is very compelling evidence that we may not be alone. These aircraft, we'll call them aircraft, are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory, nor in any foreign inventory that we are aware of." Unquote. Senator Harry Reid of Nevada tweeted, I'm glad the Pentagon is finally releasing this footage, but it only scratches the surface of research and materials available. The U.S. needs to take a serious scientific look at this and any potential national security implications. The American people deserve to be informed. What? Harry Reid wants us to take this seriously? Wouldn't that be an insult to honest scientific inquiry, as Paul M. Sutter said of Oumuamua? Sorry, I had to get another shot in on that poor guy. Okay, let's sum this up. The Pentagon acknowledges UFOs. Louis Elizondo says we may not be alone. Sandra Reid says there is way more to see, and Paul Sutter is just pissed that we're talking about this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we've had UFO disclosure. We're just not allowed to call them that. Now, maybe there are human explanations. Perhaps the Pentagon has a reason to lie, to cover up something more down to earth that they don't want us to know about. Let's face it, it's the Pentagon. But take them at their word for a minute. There are strange objects of unknown origin basically teasing Navy pilots over American airspace. If the Pentagon had not revealed the existence of these UAPs, it would be easy to mock believers in the Galactic Federation. But until we're able to figure out exactly what is capable of free reign in American skies in a post-9-11 world, and the military has no clue what they are seeing, let's cut these believers some slack. And this is not the only government official, by the way, to disclose the existence of an extraterrestrial civilization. Don't forget, Canada's former defense minister, Paul Hellyer, went public about his belief in UFOs way back in 2004, and later said there were four different alien species who had been visiting Earth for thousands of years. But this is all crazy, right? What do you guys think? Is it less crazy? Is, is the Galactic Federation less crazy to you? now that the Pentagon has actually admitted the existence of UAPs? I think it is. But what do you think? Like, subscribe, and comment with your thoughts down below. And our third story involves an alien signal dubbed BLC-1. Astronomers on behalf of the Breakthrough Listen Project, using the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia, detected a signal from nearby Proxima Centauri, a mere 4.2 light years away. In galactic terms, this is our backyard. It is the nearest star system to Earth. Now, it's a red dwarf star, but it has two known planets. One of them just happens to be a super-Earth, which means it's bigger than Earth, but it's Earth-like, and it is in the star's habitable zone. Now, I don't think anyone thought that when we finally detected an alien signal, it would literally be from the star right next door to us. That's got to be either a staggering coincidence, or life is just so extremely common in the universe that it's simply normal. Now, this is not confirmed. Astronomers suspect it must be of human origin, 
because if not, aliens! And since aliens don't exist, well, you get the point. It is important to keep in mind that the Breakthrough Listening Project has lots of algorithms and filters in place to go through all the stuff they constantly get that is obviously not aliens. So by the time a signal comes to your attention, it's not easy to explain. This is a narrow band signal, for example, which means, yeah, it's probably not natural. And it's coming from one place in the sky, i.e. it's stationary, so not a plane, probably not a satellite. All we know for sure at this point is that astronomers are determined to find the true cause of the signal, just like they're determined to find the true cause of the wow signal from back in 1977. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath. What do you think about BLC-1? Is this an alien signal? Is this the most promising candidate since the WOW signal in 1977? Are these instructions on how to build a wormhole spaceship? God, that would be awesome. Comment down below, and while you're down there, hit like and subscribe. And our fourth and last story for today concerns new revelations about why we dream. If you've read my young adult novels, you know any story about dreams is going to catch my attention. Has the mystery finally been solved? According to an intriguing article in Time Magazine's online edition entitled, Why Do We Dream? Neuroscientists David Eagleman and Don Vaughn think so. The story starts off, oddly enough, by talking about echolocation, the ability to see using sound. Basically, human brains rewire themselves in blind people who are denied visual stimuli. This rewiring, known as brain plasticity, ultimately enhances other abilities such as echolocation, you know, the authors could have saved a lot of time here by simply saying, Daredevil. We all get Daredevil. In either sense, in a series of blindfold experiments, it turns out that the rewiring happens in temporarily blind people as well. And it happens almost immediately, within an hour. Now, what does all this have to do with dreams? The authors argue that dreams evolved to protect our brains from rewiring. The brain evolved to throw all these random fake images at us while we sleep in order to protect us from said rewiring. They call this defense activation theory. And the authors of this Time article conclude, since the dawn of communication, dreams have perplexed philosophers, priests, and poets. What do dreams mean? Do they portend the future? Or do they serve a more practical, functional purpose? We suggest that dream sleep exists, at least in part, to prevent the other senses from taking over the brain's visual cortex when it goes unused. Dreams are the counterbalance against too much flexibility. Thus, although dreams have long been the subject of song and story, they may be better understood as the strange love child of brain plasticity and the rotation of the planet. Wow, nothing like a good mechanistic explanation to destroy my young adult novels. But it doesn't begin to explain the array of oddities associated with dreaming, not the least of which is precognition, as revealed by Eric Wargo in his strangely compelling book, Time Loops, Precognition, Retrocausation, and the Unconscious. This book poses some intriguing thoughts. Specifically, what if people who have a precognitive experience in their dreams aren't seeing the future, rather they're remembering it? Reading this book reminded me of a recurring dream I had as a kid. Whatever the dream, it would always end with my alarm going off, which would jolt me into consciousness. But the dream always naturally led to that alarm as its natural conclusion. Again, the alarm didn't interrupt my dream, rather the alarm was always the obvious end to it. Say for example, I'm dreaming about walking down the street in a dream that feels like it lasts for hours. Then suddenly a car swerves off the road and is about to hit me. When it honks its horn, sounding exactly like my alarm, which then wakes me up. If Wargo is correct, signals from the future travel backwards in time through quantum trickery and are picked up by my unconscious mind, which then constructs a dream to make sense of that annoying sound that it knows is coming. Yeah, I like that much better than brain plasticity. If you've been craving an extremely strange, mind-bending book, check out Eric Wargo's work. Hey, that's our show for today. If you learned something new or I made you laugh, please hit like and subscribe as it tells the YouTube algorithms to recommend this video, which allows me to continue doing more stuff. Similarly, comment down below with your thoughts. Just be sure to keep it civil and keep it edgy. This is your host, Jay Jordan Hawk. See you next time on The Edge. And if you enjoy my content, then check out my edgy award-winning young adult fiction, Puka Wiss the Outcast, A Scout is Brave, and Unwanchagi the Dreamer.